earth with all its perfectness, beauty, and flawlessness. Earth, with all its unequaled, unparalleled, unmatched awesomeness. Earth, the only known place in the universe that supports life. Gone. Dead. Destroyed. How will the future of Earth's natural resources affect the human race by yours truly? Earth's resources are depleting at a record pace, and that's what you need to know. The fate of the human race depends on the future of our natural resources. It is up to us humans to use our natural resources in a way that will affect the human race positively rather than negatively. But, in order to do so, you must first learn about the importance of Earth's essential resources, water, and air. Essential resources are necessary for the sustenance of life, and without them, we would not be able to survive. Currently, 70% of Earth is composed out of water, but only 2.5% of Earth's water is fresh water. To add insult to injury, 98.8% .8 of Earth's fresh water is either trapped in ice or in the ground. This means that only 0.03% of Earth's fresh water is accessible. Simply unbelievable. Meanwhile, all species depend on air to breathe, even the ones underwater, because water is composed partly of air. Humans need air to properly function. When you take in a big deep breath, it helps restore the brain and everything else. But pollution is degrading our air quality to a point where 1.3 million people worldwide die of airborne diseases annually. Greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and sulfur contribute greatly to the deterioration of Earth's air quality. The changes in our atmospheric conditions are causing rare disasters that we never imagined would happen. Hurricane Sandy in 2012 and the Tohoku tsunami in 2011 in Japan are prime examples of such catastrophes. On the other hand, Earth's water supply is running extremely low. With an ever-increasing population, the demand for fresh water is increasing daily. This could become a major issue for humans in the future. Adam, cue the music! By the year 2025, more than 884 million people will not have enough clean drinking water to sustain themselves. By the year 2030, there will be inadequate clean water for sanitation and waste disposal for 2.5 billion people. Imagine not having enough water to flush a toilet. Just the thought of it makes me want to cringe. As you can see, Earth's water supply is in your hands. Use it wisely. Let's just hope we're not as excited about all this as Mr. Russell over here. Watch this clip. Ah, for the love of me. Go on into the bushes and do your business. Okay, here, hold my stuff. I've always wanted to try this. Now what we've all been waiting for, the important resources. But wait, didn't we just talk about essential resources? No, silly. Important resources are much different. An important resource affects both humans and society, but we're able to live without them. You mean like pizza and video games? No, I'm talking about ice and forestry. Ice is a natural resource that humans affect the most. When we release carbon dioxide and the different greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, Earth's temperature rises and the ice around the world starts to melt. On the other side of the spectrum, ice does so many positive things for the environment. Ice maintains the balance of both our weather systems and our ecosystems, which both impact the human race immensely. Ice contributes greatly to science and our understanding of the world, but we'll get to that later. Forestry plays a big role in our daily lives. Forests and trees provide food, shelter, wildlife habitats, fuel, medicinal supplies, and most importantly, sources of oxygen. Tree forests cover 9.4% of Earth's surface and 30% of Earth's landmass. The demand for wood is expected to double in the next 20 years, from 435 million meters cubed in 2010 to 870 million meters cubed of wood in 2030. But why is wood so in demand, and what is it used for? 
with the United Nations Committee in Europe has estimated a 3.5% annual growth rate for wood energy. This means that in the future, humans will become more dependent and reliant on wood energy, which will help reduce our overall fossil fuel emissions. But this will only further the depletion of wood worldwide. Forestry is being depleted by natural causes such as fires and infestations, along with human activities such as clear cutting and paper production. To make matters worse, logging companies consider the products of the wood more useful than the trees themselves. This means that they don't care about the environment and they just want to make money. So not only are we cutting down the trees that absorb carbon dioxide, but we're also producing carbon dioxide with the machines that we cut down the trees with. Does that make sense to you? Remember how I mentioned that ice contributes to our understanding of the world? Well, the time has come for me to explain. Over the past couple of years, scientists and environmentalists have conducted various experiments throughout the Arctic. By drilling cylinders of ice called ice cores like so, we were able to examine the ancient air trapped in the ice, and also the amount of carbon dioxide trapped inside them. Scientists have learned that past temperature and carbon dioxide levels are very much related. They go up together, and they go down together. Over the past 800,000 years, atmospheric carbon dioxide levels have never surpassed 280 parts per million. But atmospheric carbon dioxide levels are rising alarmingly. Here's a clip from Henderson News Live with the latest and greatest stories. Uh, news. Fans are getting excited for the release of the uh, new Man of Steel, which is the next Superman. What is this? Breaking news! We've just got a news that air pollution has surpassed 400 parts per million. Let's head down to the studio for an exclusive interview with Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Daniel. Hey, Samir. I'm a doctor, Sanjay Gupta, over here. Mr. Gupta, for the viewers here at home, what exactly does 400 parts of a million mean? 400 parts per million, or 400 ppm, represents that for every 1 million parts of a substance, 400 parts of that substance are composed of something else. In this case, for every 1 million parts of air, 400 parts of it are composed out of fossil fuels and greenhouse gases. But how will this affect the human race? Well, essentially, 4 ten thousandths of every breath you take is now composed of toxic and poisonous chemicals. This could cause severe disease and illness worldwide. Thank you for that detailed explanation. This is Daniel Thang reporting for Henderson News. That's it for now. And, and as, as always, always you're, you're watching, watching Henderson, Henderson News. News. Now that we have all this information, what can we do with it? Or in Spanish... Ahora que tenemos toda esa información, ¿qué hacemos con ella? We can start with application and the three R's. Reuse, reduce, and recycle. By reusing, reducing, and recycling our resources in various ways, we can solve the depletion and degradation problems associated with our natural resources. In the case of water, one solution could be to harness solar power and to use it to distill water and make it clean enough to drink. In the case of forestry, we can plant more trees to make sure there is a healthy regeneration of trees wherever logging is taking place. As for the other natural resources, my action plan has just a thing. The way we use and treat our natural resources now will affect the way we humans live in 10, 20, or even 30 years from now. We need to start raising awareness about how we're depleting our own natural resources. Many people don't even realize how serious this is. It's not a joke. To be honest with you, I'm actually pretty worried about our future here on Earth. Because, to tell you the truth, it's just not looking that great. So in conclusion, the way we handle our natural resources in these upcoming years will be a test of our determination, perseverance, and our overall desire to survive.